What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now in this video we're going to make a cabinet scraper or carrot scraper and we're going to make it from an old handsaw. So nice and simple, cost effective. It's going to cost us absolutely nothing. We're going to use the tools that we have in the workshop. So all we need is a hand foil, we need a screwdriver to act as a burnisher if you don't have a burnisher and some way of cutting it out. So either a hacksaw or a grinder, you're going to need some way to remove that material from that saw blade and it's nice, quick, simple and easy and we have some nice results. So let's make it on, make a card slash cabinet scraper. Okay, so the very first thing we want to do is take the handle off this, get it apart and get it cleaned up. So let me just pull the screws, just like that, and try and get this thing apart. There we go, that's off. Now, we want to clean this up. Now, we want a saw that's obviously not too heavily pitted with rust. This one is just mostly surface rust, I hope. It looks to be just mostly surface rust. So, we'll hit this with the orbital sander now, we'll get it cleaned up, and then we'll mark out our card, and we'll cut it out. Okay, there we go, there's our saw cleaned up and it was just surface rust like I said, so that's just an 80 grit disc, gives that a nice clean up. Now, one very important um, little safety tip I'll give you here, I used my dust extractor on this and you saw the sparks that this generated. That dust extractor is completely empty and I've checked it now to make sure that there's nothing going on inside in it. Do this outside, it's a very stormy wet day outside here, that's why I'm doing it inside, and I just use my dust extractor to gather up some of that dust. But sparks going down into a dust extractor that's full of chippings obviously is an extreme fire hazard. So I just wanted to point that out, that's an empty dust extractor. I've checked it, everything is fine, but just beware of that if you're going to use your dust at your shop vac or your dust extractor while you're doing this. Like I say, if it was a nice day outside, I would have taken this outside and done it out there. But it's quite stormy out there, so I'm doing it inside and I wanted to catch some of that dust, uh, rust that was coming off this. So, just something to be aware of. Okay, let's get this marked out. Now, we have a lovely straight edge on the top of our saw, so that's what we're gonna work off. And I'm gonna make this 150 millimeters in length, which is about six inches, or it's exactly six inches. So, six inches by three inches, or 150 millimeters by about 80 millimeters, I think should be good. So. I'm going to square off this edge, just like that. Seeing that we have a nice straight edge to work with, we'll just square off it. Easy mill and easy mill down, which brings us right to there. Square up those two lines. Just like that. Now that's going to be our card scraper that we're going to cut out. Let's do that. Okay, so there's our card scraper all cut out. Now, I'm just going to square up and dress these edges, get all the sharp boring stuff off it, just so it's nice and easy to hold. The edge I'm concerned about is the nice straight edge that we got off our saw. So my cuts with my grinder aren't perfectly straight, but that doesn't matter. We're using this edge, the straight edge that was off the saw, as that's going to be our cutting edge. Now, we'll prepare that now in a second, but for now I just want to square up all these sides, dress the edges of it, get it nice in hand so there's no sharp corners or anything like that. I'm going to roll off that corner, that corner, and I'm going to roll off the corner for our cutting edge as well. So, into the voice. Now, if you haven't got a grinder, you could potentially cut this with a hacksaw, but you'll probably go through a good few hacksaw blades. That saw is hardened steel, and it's hardened steel is what you need to make these with. So, I'm just trying to support it in the voice and just flatten off those edges. Yeah, we just want to get rid of all the bore, so that's nice to hold in hand and we're not cutting our fingers. Okay, 
is, now we want to prepare our cutting edge. Now the perfect straight edge that we got off our saw is rounded over, so that's a dressed edge. We need that to be perfectly square and flat. I'll draw it out for you now in a second and show you what we're going to do. Now I took a piece of two by four to the bandsaw and put a curve in it. So we're going to take our card scraper, leaving the edge that we want sticking out up, and we're just going to put this down inside in this, um, just to hold it. And we want that edge barely sticking out. I'm just going to put that in the vise, and we're going to use this now to square our edge. We just tap that down. And we just want that protruding through very slightly so we can run the foil over it now using this piece of timber to make sure that we're keeping that edge nice and square. Okay guys, very quickly I just want to draw this out just to illustrate what we're doing here. So, what we have at the minute on our saw blade that we cut out, it has a rounded edge. So looking down the profile of our card scraper, it has a rounded edge like this. Now we want to get rid of that. So that's why we have it in the voice now in that little jig. What we're aiming to get is a perfectly square edge. So that's what we want. We want it nice and square to its sides. So 290 degrees corners here. We want to flatten this with the foil. And then we want to take it to the diamond stone and we want to polish this edge. We want to get it nice and smooth. Then we're going to burnish the edge. So we're going to roll over these corners, which is what's going to give us our cutting edge for the card scraper. That's how we sharpen it. So what it'll end up looking like with the corners rolled over is something like this. Now this is a slightly exaggerated drawing just to illustrate it. But that's what our sharpened card scraper will look like with its corners rolled off. And it's these hooks on either side that does all the cutting. So we want to take it from a rounded edge to a perfectly square edge, and then we're going to take our burnisher and we're going to burnish the edge, roll those edges over once we have this nice and square and nice and smooth, and that will give us our cutting hooks for our coward scraper. Now, that's what we want to achieve, so hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so let's start preparing this edge. Now, like I said, I have it in just a curve I put into a piece of timber. I have it just above the surface so I can run my foil across the top of the four by two or two by four. And that'll just allow me to put a nice square edge in the top of this card scraper. We just want to get it nice and flat and square to its sides. It's not going to take much to do it. That's all we need to do. So now we have a nice, we've taken that rounded edge off. That's nice and flat and nice and square. Okay, so now that we've flattened and squared that edge, we have a bar now that we have to get rid of. So we have to get rid of this bar. Now I'm using an old diamond stone that I have. It's a 400 grit and a 1000 grit. It's a real cheap one. It's a faithful one, but it'll be absolutely perfect for this job. So I'm just going to work get it nice and flat on the diamond stone. I'm just gonna move it back and forward. I just wanna take off that bar that we've created with the foil. That's all, that's gone on that side now. So that's all we need to do is just remove that bar. Now we wanna polish the edge that we've um, created, that flat edge, we wanna get that nice and smooth. So we're gonna do that on this diamond stone as well, but we're gonna keep it square. So we're just gonna get a little block to set on this and then we're gonna rub it. I'll show you that now. Okay, it's getting quite stormy out there. You can probably hear it on the camera. We might get blown away. But here's my diamond stone. Here's my edge. I just have two arrows just to donate that this is the edge that I want to use. P put my piece of timber on my stone like this. It's just an off cut, but it's good and square and true. I can put my card scraper up against it and we can just ensure that we're polishing that edge. I'm going to start on the 400 grit. And it's important that we keep this edge square. That's it, that's, that's dressing up lovely there now. So, just a little tip for you. Get a block, put this flat against it, use it as a kind of a fence for all the world. Same way as you would do on your jointer or on your planer. And that will give us a nice 90 degree edge. Now, that's looking lovely. We move over to the 1000 grit. It's only going to take a few strokes. bit of honing fluid on that. Up our timber. Keeping everything nice, square and true and pressed against our fence. 
Lovely. So that's all we want to do. That's that edge now. Nice, smooth and polished up. It's square and it's flat. So now we need to burnish over our corners. So let's do that. Okay, so here we are back in our jig. Now I've left it stick up uh, about 10 mil. Should be good. I'm going to use a screwdriver. Now I don't have a burnisher. Again, we're kind of doing this on a budget. Um, if you have a burnisher, lovely. A burnisher is just a hardened steel rod. Whatever you use to do this, it has to be harder than this. Now, screwdrivers are hardened steel, but some of them are only hardened to the tip. So I'm hoping that the shaft on this long Phillips screwdriver should be good to do this job. And what I want to do is I want to roll the edge, both edges. So I'm going to tilt the screwdriver to about five degrees, just off center. I'm going to press down hard, and I'm just going to try and roll over that corner to create that hook. So again, lots of pressure. Mind you don't slip and reef your hand off the top of the card scraper. But like I say, you can buy burnishers that are specific to doing this job. You can get a burnisher that looks exactly like this screwdriver, but it'll have a thicker shaft and it'll be hardened steel the whole way down. But again, angle of five degrees, plenty of pressure and just try and roll over that edge until you feel that hook all the way along it. And that's exactly how we sharpen our card scraper. We want to do that on both sides. So roll that edge all the way down. Plenty of pressure. You can also do this in a voice, but this simple little jig is nice and handy. And now what we're looking for is that hook all the way down on both sides, which we've just achieved there now. Okay, let's try it out. Okay, so let's try this out. So I have a piece of sapili here, and it was sapili that was giving me the trouble in the last few projects with tear out. Now the beauty of card scrapers, you can go with the grain, you can go against the grain. If you have a real kind of nasty grain, these will do a great job. And what we're looking for is to get some nice shavings. If we're creating too much dust, then we're not sharp enough. But it's only the barest corner that we're rolling over. The picture I drew was an exaggerated picture showing you that hook. So you'll feel the burr that you've rolled over, the edge that you've rolled over. So they can be a little bit stiff. You can make holders for these to go into, that's not a problem. So you just want to get a nice little bend in it, get your thumbs behind it, find the right angle. And we want to see some nice shavings coming off it. Just like that. Again, if we're creating too much dust, we're not sharp enough. But if we can roll up some nice shavings like that, that's exactly what we want. Lovely. And that gives us a lovely surface that we can then dress up later with a bit of sandpaper. We get some nice shavings coming off that. Let me get you, for, get you in for a close-up. Okay, just give you a quick close-up of this in action. Again, so we want to put a nice curve in it, just a slight bend in it, just to make it easier to cut with. Get your thumbs behind it, plenty of support, and then you find the right angle. And we just want to roll up some nice shavings. And like I say, the beauty of a card scraper is you can go with the green, you can go against the green. And it's just a way of tackling some nasty grain when you're getting tear out. And you can see it took all of, I don't know, half an hour to make this. Yeah, that's not too bad a surface there. Again, a card scraper will work where a hand plane won't, where a hand plane will get tear out. You can use a card scraper. Hit that with a bit of sandpaper now, and we're good to go. Right guys, there we go. One cabinet scraper made from an old handsaw blade, and it's always lovely to be able to recycle some stuff and not throw it out into the garbage. 
and uh, to get a nice working tool out of it. So very, very simple. You can see just how easy it is. Now, I'm certainly not the greatest cabinet scraper sharpening, sharpener in the world. I still need some practice, but that's not too bad. I'm pretty happy with those results. So a little bit more work and we can get even nicer shavings. I might even get a proper burnisher for doing the edges. But like I showed you, you can do it with a screwdriver, no problem. So we did it on a budget. Cost us absolutely nothing using the tools that we have in our shop. You can get yourself a good cabinet scraper. So don't throw out your old circular saw blades or your miter saw blades or your old hand saws. Get some cabinet scrapers out of them. Costs you absolutely nothing, only a little bit of elbow grease. So there you go guys, hopefully you've enjoyed that. Uh, hopefully you got some good information out of it. Hopefully it gives you a little bit of inspiration to go and make your own tools. So give it a thumbs up if you found it helpful. And if you're new here, think about hitting the subscribe button. I'm gonna make some more tools in the not so distant future. Some tools on a budget that every woodworker can use. And a cabinet scraper is certainly something that's great to have in your tool kit. And like I say, it's pretty easy and cost effective to make these as well. So there you go guys, hopefully you've enjoyed that one now. Apologies for the weather, but it's a bit of a storm outside. So I'm going to get out of here now, guys. I shall see you in the next one. Take it easy.